Welcome to Seize the Mains by Raj Malhotra's IS Academy. I'm Surbhi Sardana and this is season 3 of our daily answer writing initiative. See, this initiative is running in coordination with our website from Monday to Saturday at 9 p.m. Every day at 9 p.m. we bring out a question from current affairs topic, a topic that is going on in current affairs. Based on that lines, we frame a mock question for UPSC Civil Services mains examination and what we do is we discuss a model answer for it after uh, you know uh, showing the, the question to you. The question and the answer, uh, the entire content that we discussed on, uh, disc discuss on Seize the Mains that gets updated on our website which is rajaisacademy.com. The link to the website is present in the description. If you click on it, it will take you to our mains answer writing section but hold on till the end of this video. Uh, after the mains answer writing section, you will see this daily mains answer writing challenge and all the questions that we have discussed on Seize the Mains till date have been updated there with their model answers as you can see and our answers are very organized, uh, the introduction, body paragraphs, various parts of body paragraphs, they have been segregated, so no, um, you know, nothing here and there and very organized answers, we also give you tips on how to present better. Not only this, uh, there is this comment section under each and every question, after the answer this comment section would appear. What you can do is uh, click pictures of your answers that you are writing for these questions and post them on our website. Our team evaluates those answers entirely free of cost and responds back to you with their feedback. And uh, this uh, entire initiative is free of cost, all from current affairs. So just join this initiative if you haven't done it already. It would help you immensely in your civil services journey, whether for prelims, mains or uh, subsequent stages. So yes, uh, let's see what is the topic for today. Uh, the topic is passive euthanasia. Uh, euthanasia has been in news and especially passive euthanasia has been in news, uh, news because Supreme Court recently issued a directive. It changed the way the permission has to be sought for the living will uh, in case of in cases of pass passive euthanasia. So uh, again, a sample question has been framed. Uh, look at the question and try to answer it with us. What do you understand by euthanasia? Uh, discuss its legal status in India. What are the issues involved? Answer in 250 words and submit your answers at rajaisacademy.com. See, uh, I would request you to pause the video here for some time, for like two minutes, pick up a paper and pen and try to see, uh, try to see what you know about this question and how will you approach this answer. Talking about the approach to this question, uh, very simple, see when this, uh, when the questions that appear on your mains examination, they have been segregated into various sub parts, that means uh, the question, the answer is going to be pretty simple. It's with the shorter questions that we find it tough to know that uh, what do we have to write in our answers. But since this question has three parts, three parts are very well visible here. So again, even if you keep on answering these three parts directly, uh, you will be, you know, done with your 250 words answer and you'll be awarded really good mark for it. So what do you understand by euthanasia? Obviously, the first paragraph of all our answers is talking about the uh, subject matter of the question. So here since it is about euthanasia, that is something that has directly been asked from you. So definitely write about what is euthanasia, what are the types of euthanasia. Uh, there have been, there are many types of euthanasia. There are many, many countries where passive euthanasia is legal and it is allowed. But uh, just, you know, keep the introduction part short. When they asking, when they are asking you what do you understand by euthanasia, they don't um, want you to write 100 words for euthanasia itself. So discuss its legal status in India and uh, legal status in India, yes, passive euthanasia is legal, active euthanasia is not allowed anywhere in the world as of now. So yes, it's legal but uh, the directive here is discuss. Discuss is the directive uh, as you can see in the second part of the question. So they are asking you to discuss the legal status in India. Definitely you will have to talk about the details involved around the discussion of uh, euthanasia in India. So talk about what are the benefits of uh, having uh, you know, legally allowed passive euthanasia in the country, what are the issues involved and when you talk about what are the issues involved, that is exactly the third part of your question, what are the issues involved. So that simplifies your approach, that simplifies the discuss directive, um, write about any cases, any, you know, judgments of Supreme Court, for example, the Aruna Shanbao case of uh, 2013, um, if you can associate with uh, euthanasia, if there are any other cases. Also, there have been a lot of statements uh, by late, profe uh, late uh, doc um, Professor S Stephen Hawking, so uh, regarding euthanasia, because uh, he struggled a lot with uh, 
physical disability uh, for his um, majority of its lifetime, uh, majority of his lifetime. So, he uh, was always commenting or giving his viewpoints about passive euthanasia at least. So, if you can quote him in your answers, uh, the Supreme Court has recently done it. Uh, if you can quote him in your answers and uh, utilize that information in the favor of what you are writing, nothing better than that. So, let us start writing this question, let us talk about what do we understand by euthanasia first and uh, then we will move on to addressing the other parts of the answer. So, euthanasia what is it? It refers to the practice of an individual deliberately ending their life often time to get relief from an incurable condition uh, or intolerable pain and suffering. A euthanasia which can be administered only by a physician can be either active or passive. Talk about active and passive euthanasia here. Active euthanasia involves an active intervention to end a person's life with substances or external force such as administering, administering a lethal injection, killing somebody that is you know that is equivalent to murder. Passive euthanasia on the other hand, it refers to withdrawing life support or treatment that is essential to keep a terminally, terminally ill uh, a person alive. For example, the oxygen support, the kind of uh, vitamins or glucose that you have been supplying to a person. For example, if people are on ventilators, things like that. Then uh, talking about the second part uh, discussing the legal status of euthanasia in India. So, Supreme Court in 2018 uh, recognized that a person with persistent vegetative state uh, with no scope of improvement has a right to end his life with dignity. Thus, the right to life under Article 21 of the uh, thus uh, passive euthanasia has been recognized in India as a facet of right to life under Article 21 of the Indian Constitution. So, right to die has also been recognized, uh, you know, in part when it uh, comes to passive euthanasia that is recognized as, um, you know, under Article 21 of the Indian Constitution that is your right to life. Also, uh, talking about the legal status here, before talking about the exact legal status, you can talk about that uh, for the first time in India, passive euthanasia was allowed in the Aruna Shanbhav case in uh, uh, in Aruna Shanbhav case in 2013. So, that is something you uh, that can find mention in your answers and then talk about the legal status which is at present. So, Supreme Court allowed passive euthanasia while recognizing the living will. See, the concept of living will here is very important. Uh, while recognizing the concept, recognizing the living will of terminally ill patients who could go into a permanent vegetative state and issued guidelines regulating this procedure. You do not have to write in detail about the procedure, the question does not demand that. In case the question had this directive called explain, explain the legal status of uh, passive euthanasia or euthanasia in the country, then you sh you could have or you should have talked about what are the, what is the procedure involved to seek passive euthanasia in the country. So, but right now it is not required. So, in case a person does not have a living will, uh, what does, uh, what do the family members do in that case? Then the members of the family can make a plea before the high court to seek permission for pa passive euthanasia. So, they will have to approach the high court to seek permission for passive euthanasia in that case. So, yes, that is about the discuss, uh, discuss the legal part of it. Uh, just sum up this part, the legal part, just sum it here, sum it up here, what are the benefits of doing this. Hence, it has been recognized that forcing uh, terminally ill patients to live undermines their dignity and exposes them to pain and suffering. So, this is, uh, you know, this is exactly the quote or this is exactly the, these are exactly the words of Stephen Hawking. You can definitely quote him here and uh, def, uh, or just ignore that part, just write it as your own statement. In such a scenario, euthanasia ensures a dignified death. So, that is, uh, you know, for sure that follows from passive euthanasia. Also, allowing those who are in a vegetative state to undergo euthanasia prevents them from futile treatments and also it reduces the uh, burden of caregivers. This could be financial burden, this could be a uh, burden of caregivers of being present in person around a patient, um, any kind of burden, uh, just, you know, do not be very direct when it comes to burden, uh, be very formal in your approach, do not lie, do not write, do not write sentences, uh, uh, you know, we have been reading statements regarding euthanasia at many places that, you know, uh, uh, this, uh, all the resources that are being uh, put to treat these patients who want to die can be put somewhere else to treat people who can be cured. So, that is not a very good or a very good way to write answers or a very formal way to approach your answers. Keep it very dignified, whatever you are writing, keep it, uh, keep the language very formal. Even if you want to write about details, make sure that those details do not decrease the quality of your answer that you are writing. Um, 
talking about body paragraph 2 and what are the issues involved. So, the first issue is obviously about medical ethics. Medical ethics, medical practitioners are trained to save people, they are not trained to you know let people die. So, that is not a part of med medical ethics plus with the advancement of medical science, is it even uh, you know acceptable to let people die? The medical practitioners have to encourage the patients to lead their painful life with strength. Secondly, it is a moral wrong, it is a moral wrong to let somebody die or to you know support somebody in dying. So, taking a life is morally and ethically wrong, the value of life can never be undermined and this is something again this was supported by Stephen Hawking himself that there is always something left to live or something to do in life. So, death cannot be the uh, last resort. Uh, third, uh, when it comes to passive euthanasia in the country, please take a note of that vulnerable people whether it is old people in the house who cannot uh, you know uh, who cannot be the breadwinners for the family or who cannot you know uh, support the family in any other way they can be just uh, they can appear to be burdens to the family to the younger generations whether it is their own ch own kids grandkids and especially for families which uh, which are not financially very well off. So, for them, for the physically disabled and for poor people, this could be you know a slippery slope. Uh, they will become more prone to it. Uh, this, this could harm these people a lot plus then it also uh, when you know old people or terminally ill patients, they are not treated well or they are not treated as human beings and they are treated as somebody who can be left to die. Then what example do we set to our younger generations, for our younger generations as our society or what example or what culture do we create in a country? Uh, for our future. So, that is something that has to be questioned here when it comes to legalizing passive euthanasia. Then uh, suicide versus euthanasia, sometimes you know terminally, ter terminally ill patients, uh, if you ask patients who have been suffering from the same disease for a very long time, since a very long time, they would definitely opt for passive euthanasia or they would definitely want to die, but that is because of the pressure that they feel in that pain, that is because of the depression that uh, erupts out of this long illness, that is not their actual will, they might want to live a dignified life, they might, might want to live if there is treatment available. So, you can never differentiate between uh, actual will and uh, uh, and a you know a will uh, or a pressurized decision. Then you have uh, passive euthanasia, it can obviously lead to a slippery slope phenomena which leads on to more number of non-voluntary euthanasia, there can be many cases erupting here where the patient's consent isn't isn't known or uh, you know it is uh, it is not even taken. So, when the cases of path passive euthanasia arise, how will we ensure that you know utmost care, utmost care has to be taken here, utmost ca care has to be ensured here and uh, ensuring that it is only for the right means, it is only for the benefit of the patient and not due to any wrong means. For example, property uh, might be involved, finances might be involved, anything could be involved while administering uh, passive euthanasia to any person. So, these are the you know broad issues involved. Obviously, you know when you see a lot of articles in the newspaper, for example, this thing is a, is a news now. So, a lot of people would be writing about their uh, viewpoints on this uh, issue. Definitely, if you find something new, definitely note down, note them down separately on a sheet where you write just viewpoints on a daily basis and add them to your answers where you are finishing this entire topic, where you are reading this entire topic from or just even if you are writing with us on a daily basis, add those few points to your answers. That is how you know step by step you can uh, get better with your mains preparation. Then in the conclusion, obviously you know uh, talk about the recent update that the Supreme Court has simplified this process for passive euthanasia by modifying its earlier order and removing the condition that mandated a magistrate's approval for withdrawing or withho withholding of life support to a terminally ill patient. However, passive euthanasia, now you are uh, on the concluding line after mentioning what is happening around. Uh, concluded by saying passive euthanasia can be justified if carried out only in exceptional circumstances that too with utmost care. So, conclusion can be creative, you can write about what you feel but definitely do not decrease the quality of your answer, do not go over emotional with topics like these, keep your language very formal. So, that is your entire answer for the day for Seize the Mains Day 177. Click on the link in the description, uh, visit our website uh, rajaisacademy.com and look for question 177 on Mains Answer Writing section on our website. Stay tuned to the channel, I will see you with another discussion tomorrow at 9 pm on Seize the Mains. Keep working hard and all the best.